I mean, the question is that the bill be now read a second time. I call the member for Dunkley. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. This speech is dedicated to Ruby from Frankston, her mother Janine, her sister Isabel, and her brother Trent. This is Ruby's story in the words of her mother Janine. Ruby was welcomed into the world on the 31st of July 2007. She seemed perfectly healthy, was settled and feeding well. On the last night of our hospital stay, I had dozed off and woke suddenly. I looked down. Ruby had gone limp in my arms and her skin had turned a grey-yellow colour. Immediately I knew something was wrong. I rushed her to special care. She'd stopped breathing and the nightmare had begun. I was interviewed by the medical staff as to what had happened. I felt like a criminal. It was awful and I felt sick in the stomach. A few days followed and my husband and I were approached by a doctor who specialised in mitochondrial diseases. He started talking to us about the possibility of Ruby having one. It was overwhelming as we knew nothing about them. The doctors decided to operate on Ruby to take samples of her liver for testing. At first I didn't want them to put her through any more pain, but I realised that she would have to go through it as we needed an answer. She made it through the operation, but it was so bittersweet. We had just been informed that it was inevitable that she was going to die, as she was not thriving or getting any better. We prepared for her death. It was surreal, like getting your beautiful child ready for a party, dressing her in a nice outfit and brushing her hair. But in this case, we were taking her foot and handprints and a lock of her hair. We were given a pram so we could take her outside. It was winter, but the sun had come out, and she opened her eyes and once again seemed like a healthy baby just for a moment. I wanted to take her and run away, run away with her right there and then to escape her impending death. She died an hour later in my arms. A few months later, my husband and I were called back to the hospital and were told that Ruby had died from the mitochondrial disease complex four. I have two other children. They are only young, but when they become adults, they will need to be tested. Janine told me that it is so important that this legislation goes through. It will always be in the back of her mind and Isabel and Trent's minds as to whether they also have mitochondrial disease, and they will have to be tested before they have kids. Isabel and Trent know about their sister Ruby. They know about their mother now being a big supporter and working with the Mito Foundation, and they know about this legislation. Janine said to me that what she went through with Ruby and what she has to face for the future of her other two children is something that she doesn't want any other parent to have to go through. She said it was heart-wrenching and their whole lives were changed. And it was scary that Janine didn't know that she had mitochondrial disease to pass on in her genes. Janine told me that if this legislation had been in place and she knew what she knows now, she would have had the donation and that she will do anything to help the Mito Foundation, which didn't exist when Ruby was born. And She told me when I spoke to her a few months ago, when we last thought this legislation was going to be listed, that she was crossing her fingers on this one. And I have no doubt that knowing this legislation is coming up for debate today, that Janine is crossing her fingers today and will be tomorrow when we vote. There are other families in my electorate whose babies have died and whose adult daughters have died. And I know of an amazing young woman, amazing young woman, who has mitochondrial disease and is doing all she can to lead a life of joy and fulfilment and service. It's for Ruby and her family and for everyone else who has a story like Ruby's and Janine's that I am supporting this legislation. I'm also supporting it because it's good science. 
and it's science that will give people the opportunity for a longer, healthier, happier life. And in the end, that's what we all want. And if this science, if this technology can give that to people who otherwise might not have children, can give that to people who otherwise would have been born with mitochondrial disease and had a short or a difficult and short life, then I believe it's my ethical and moral duty to support this legislation, and I'm doing it. I respect people who have faith. That means that they have difficulties with this legislation, and that's their right and their position. But I do urge all of my colleagues to do as I will have done, to really engage with the legislation, to engage with the Mito Foundation, and to see if you can get to the position of also supporting it. I want to thank the Mito Foundation for all of the work that they've done, briefings on this legislation, their advocacy, their support for people like Janine from my electorate. And I want to add my congratulations to the Minister for Health that others in this chamber have given. Um, on bringing this legislation forward and stewarding it through, and the Shadow Minister for Health for the way in which he's conducted himself and the previous Shadow Minister for Health with this legislation through our caucus. Janine, I hope your fingers are crossed, and I hope you and Isabel and Trent get to see this speech and know that you've done what you can to help others not to have to go through what you went through. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I thank the